So in video number eight, we're going to discuss briefly remainders. And remainders is something that comes up, I think, in elementary school. I think it's when you first learn it. It's when you first learn to divide. And remainders is pretty much what's left over after you've divided as much as you can. So an example would be this. Let's take 5 into 15. Now I'm going to do it the long division way, just to kind of map it out. How many times does 5 go into 15? Well, 5 goes into 15 three times, right? And that goes in equally, because 5 times 3 is 15, and that leaves nothing left over. So that would be a remainder of 0. Now, in this case, if you remember back to video number 7, if you watch that, we would then know that 5 is a factor of 15, and actually also 3 would be a factor of 15, right? Because each of these go into 15 equally. Let's try 5 into 16 now. Well, 5 still goes into 16 three times, right? Just like it went in three times to 15, because 5 times 4 would be 20, and that's bigger than 16. So we can only do 5 times 3 is 15. Now we subtract these, and we're left with a remainder here of 1, right? This 1 can't be, um, can't be divided by 5 any further. Um, so we would write this then as 3 remainder 1, or 3 r 1. Now, normally in math that we do for later um, subjects, we don't really talk about remainders anymore because we write the remainder in different forms. So we could write the remainder like this. We could say it's 3, and the remainder we can do 1 over 5, right? 3 and 1 fifth, right? Because that would be what's left over, right? It would be 3, and then whatever 1 divided by 5 would be. We could also turn it into a decimal. So what you would also do is you would add a decimal point here, pop into 0, and then say, okay, let me just uh, erase this. Oops, that is not a race. So erase this here. And then I'd say, okay, how many times does 5 go into 10? Well, 5 goes into 10 two times. So that would be 0.2 right here. And that would be 10, or 0.10. And then you get 0, and there you go. Your answer would be 3.2, which is, by the way, the same thing as 3 and 1 fifth. So that is normally how we would treat remainders. And most of the time, actually, we don't really worry about remainders because we just put 16 divided by 5 into our calculator and get 3.2. Uh, so we don't really think about remainders that much. But for the SAT, we do need to think about remainders. So let's look at 5 into 17. What's the remainder here? Well, 5 goes into 17 three times, uh, leaves 2. So 3 remainder 2. Uh, so let's look at the pattern here. 5 into 15, here's a remainder column, leaves a remainder of 0. 5 into 16, left a remainder of 1. 5 into 17, remainder of 2. Let's continue the pattern. 5 into 18, would leave a remainder of 3. 5 into 19, 4. 5 into 20, well, 5 goes into 20 equally, right? It goes into 4 times. So actually, we'd have a remainder 0. So look at this common pattern here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. What do you think is going to keep happening as we increase this number? It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, right? Forever. So whenever you have remainders, it kind of repeats this pattern over and over and over again. The one thing you should note is that if you're dividing by 5, you can never have a remainder of 5 or higher. You can't have 3 remainder 7, for instance. Why? Because, well, 5 can go into 7 once. So actually, this would be 4 remainder 2, because that 5 would be you know, extracted out of the 7 to make this 4, leaving 2 that can't be divided by the 5. So that's a quick primer on remainders.